For roughly 20 years, CQL has worked to collect meaningful data about individualized outcomes for those receiving services with intellectual and developmental disabilities, mental health issues, and those of the aging community. The data over 20 years has provided great insights into the impact of services on individual outcomes. However, as the service systems have changed, the need for more in-depth data and different types of data become ever more present. From January 2014 through January 2015, CQL sought to develop a new online data collection tool which would provide organizations working with CQL the ability to input data, manage a database, and run reports to allow the full quality improvement information at an individual and aggregated level. What we'll do now is take a look at the database that organizations have the opportunity to buy into or some organizations going through CQL accreditation will be given access to. CQL developed a new personal outcome measures data system using a tool called Fluid Surveys. The purpose for using Fluid Surveys are first, it's a high security system which allows us to ensure HIPAA compliance but also allows us to give controls to individualized organizations so that they're able to access their data and only their data. Second, Fluid Surveys really provides a great platform for complex survey needs. As CQL continues to grow and continues to be a leader in international nonprofit accreditation looking at quality and person-centeredness, we felt that the complexity of the personal outcome measures really led to the needs for a system that would allow us to customize it to really get the nuances of individualized outcomes. Using CQL's new personal outcome measures tool provides agencies the ability to increase the access to the tool itself, but also access to greater information. What I mean by this is this new tool is a fully online system. Organizations using the new Outcome Measures tool are receive a unique link to their organization. This unique link can be given out to all of the interviewers within an organization, whether that organization is small and local or extremely large and multi-state. Interviewers are then able to access that link and get a copy of the survey itself. This allows them to input data, to save data and continue a survey later, or to print results to either a PDF or a Word document where the information can be stored in a case file, emailed to a case manager, or given directly to the individual. Going to an online system allows interviewers to input data directly into a laptop during the interview, into an iPad during the interview, or to print out a copy of the survey, mark the responses on a paper copy, and then input the data later. As we developed the survey, we started to notice that by using our historical 42 variables, looking at the 21 outcomes and the 21 supports and are they present or not, provided great aggregated information and on an individual level provided for strong information for the ISP planning process. However, we also saw that there was a greater need to better understand not only the individuals who are receiving services, but also a more in-depth review of the actual outcome what is causing or may be causing or correlated to whether or not an outcome is or is not present. In its new iteration, the new CQL Online Personal Outcome Measures data tool moves from 42 variables through the interview process to now roughly 250 variables. What's important is that the scoring of the outcomes themselves is not different. It remains the same as it has for over 20 years, allowing organizations who have historical data to still use the information collected in this new system for trend analysis or comparing to historical results. What's changed is the type of information under each of the outcomes and the supports that's collected prior to the scoring of the overall outcome. But before we get there, we'll take a quick look at some of the changes that CQL has made under the demographics using this new outcomes tool. Like most surveys, the demographic provides organizations a strong overview of the individual who's conducting the interview as well as the individual being interviewed. However, CQL has also looked at how to use demographic information to identify areas where we as an organization and those that we work with in the field see human services moving to in the future. As an example of this, question 13, talks about decision-making authority and guardianship. Although this question is not found anywhere in the Personal Outcome Measures Manual, CQL strongly feels that the field of human services 
is moving more and more towards supported decision-making models for individuals. By collecting data under this tool, CQL is helping organizations to analyze data looking into the future. How does decision-making affect outcomes? Does moving towards independent decision-making increase outcomes? Or is there no change? Historically, no other data collection tool has looked at some of these key factors under the realms of individualized outcomes. And so we're very pleased to see that we've got the capability, the flexibility, and the agility in this new system to really push forward on where the field is going rather than reacting to where the field has been. In demographic information, we've also tried to make sure that this data system is not working within a silo. We've looked at other national data collection systems and identified ways where CQL's personal outcome measures can be used in tandem with other systems. As an example, under the demographics information, when we look at type of residence, the service types and the service names in the CQL tool match those used by the University of Minnesota and their National Residential Information Systems Project. This allows you to use your personal outcome measures data to compare it to other residential options across the country. It also provides a standard across the field for how we talk about different residential placements. Similar to the residential data, we've also looked at the Institute of Community Inclusion at the University of Massachusetts and their service definitions and service types for day and employment services. We've tried to match those services as closely as possible. So again, data can now be used across systems. So although we've made a lot of additions to the demographic information, some of the most exciting changes come within the actual indicators themselves. As an example, when we look at the personal outcome measure, people are connected to natural support, we see that although historically we have collected only this information about is the outcome present, yes or no, moving forward we will be collecting information gathered directly from the decision-making matrix in CQL's online database. This new system moves to identify each of the pieces from CQL's decision-making matrix for each individualized outcome into data points. So in the past, during an outcome interview, the interviewer would go through the list of questions and conduct the final scoring on the outcome itself. However, all the information gathered through the discussion during the decision-making matrix was never collected. Using the new online data system, we will be collecting that data, which allows for a much more in-depth look at the impact of some of these sub-factors on the actual outcomes themselves. It's important to note that the scoring of these individual factors does not determine necessarily the scoring of the main outcome. The scoring of the main outcome remains the individualized decision of the interviewer. The system does not score it automatically. By developing an algorithm to create that score would most likely be inaccurate. We know that there are too many factors within an individual's life that really contribute to whether or not an outcome is present. What we're hoping to do is have additional information so if we see that an outcome is not present, we can look more directly at the sub-factors to identify what might be causing an outcome not to be present. This becomes extremely valuable information for the ISP process or for an aggregate for a provider agency to look at where there might be gaps in service provision causing outcomes to not be present for individuals. Similar to the outcomes section, the individualized supports for each of the outcomes, we've also included all of the components of the decision-making matrix into the tool. So again, here we see all the sub-factors and then the final scoring of is the support in place. However, unlike the outcomes, which continues to use the yes or no option, under supports, we have found that although it's identifiable and, and usually easily documentable that if a support in place is in place, it is in fact a yes. But what we find is that if a support is not in place, there are usually differing levels of no that, that can be a response. And so in the new tool, what we've done is increase the number of options for no under supports to look at now three options. First is no, the organization is aware and developing a plan so that the service and supports can be in place. No, the organization is aware but no plans are being developed to make sure that that support is in place. 
And last is no, the support is not in place and the organization is unaware and is not actively taking steps to get the support to be in place. By breaking this response down, we believe that it will much more accurately show where an individual is within the service system and how organizations are helping to support that individual. Now that we've seen a few examples of the actual tool itself and the demographic information, we'll take a look at some of the reporting functions that the new system has. Moving to an online system allows organizations greater flexibility in how data is collected and managed and the type of reports that can be developed. For organizations who are accessing CQL's database at the premium or enterprise level, they will have access to the full back-end system of the database. Within this back-end system, organizations have access to 10 predefined reports, reports that are already built by CQL, and the ability to build customized reports. We'll look now at an example of one of the reports developed by CQL that is a report available to any organization who purchase access at the premium or enterprise level. Here, we'll be looking at a cross-tab analysis, looking at the personal outcome measures by the supports in place. To do so, we simply click on the link of the actual report. The system will generate the report and pull it up directly in the window. What we see here, as an example, is personal outcome measures and actual supports. What the chart's showing us in this green section are individuals who have the outcome present. So the outcome of individuals are connected to natural supports is present. Those in red, the outcome is not present. But beyond that, what we also see are for those individuals who have the outcome present, 15.8% also have the support in place. 5.3% do not have the support in place, but the organization is developing plans. 5% have the outcome in place, but do not have the support in place and no plans are being developed. And finally, 5% are achieving the outcome and the supports are simply not in place and no plans are taking place to develop the supports. On the flip side, on those who do not have the outcome present, we again see the breakdown of the supports in place or not in place. This report, if you were to scroll down, would include all of the 21 outcomes and again, generate in real time. So as new results come in, the reports will automatically upload. The system also gives you the capability to export any report directly into PDF, Word, or PowerPoint to reduce the formatting once the analysis is already complete. Another example of reports may be to look at an overview of the personal outcome measures and the supports in place. Looking at frequency counts, for each of the 21 outcomes. As an example, for national support, here we see that 7% of the, the sample had the outcome present versus 13% where the outcome was not present. Right next to that, we see all the supports. Again, nine people had the support in place, and the rest did not at differing levels. Again, this report can easily be downloaded into PDF, Word, or PowerPoint. Beyond that, organizations have the ability to either develop their own reports where they can build either a frequency count or a cross-tab analysis using any of the variables other than those which are text collected in the data system. Or organizations can add filters to any of the reports that are currently in their query to look at specific date ranges, to look at specific interviewers, or to look at specific certification or training types of their interviewers. Any type of filter of any of the variables in the system can be applied to the, to the reports themselves. Next, what we'll look at is the actual data collection system where results are stored. In the results section, organizations who have access at either the premium or the enterprise level will be able to see all of the data that's collected by the organization and can access the results themselves. This allows organizations to go in and modify a completed survey if required, or allows organizations to conduct filters, again, to see level of completeness, to look at specific individuals who have gone through the survey process by looking at filtering either by name, date of birth, or a person's unique ID, or looking at individuals residing in a specific residential or accessing a specific day program. 
Also, within this section, agencies have the ability to download all of their data into either Excel or SPSS. When you download the data, you will receive a copy of the fully managed database with data variable labels and all of your raw data. This would allow you to pull this data into additional systems for more in-depth analysis, which the system itself cannot do. Now we'll look at the differing levels of access to the system. Organizations who access the basic level of the data system will receive a unique link for data entry. Annually, the organization will receive a link to be able to download the responses, all of their aggregated data, in CQL's 10 predefined reports. Organizations in the basic level, however, will not have access to the full administrative back end of the system, which will not allow them to generate new reports, to do ad hoc reporting, or to modify responses. Agencies going through Quality Assurance or Person-Centered Excellence Accreditation after January 1, 2015 will receive access to the basic level as part of their accreditation. They will not have to subscribe separately. They will simply be given the link when accreditation information is sent out. The next level of access is the premium level. At the premium level, organizations have full administrative rights to, to the data system itself. They've got the ability to deploy their link, to log into the system where they can generate reports, run ad hoc reports, and modify data. They also have the ability to run the system in offline mode, which again, in instances where wireless internet is not available, an organization could complete the survey without the internet, and as soon as the internet connection is reestablished, the results would automatically upload into the system. This option gives a lot of flexibility to organizations who want the ability to do increased analysis with their data. Lastly, the enterprise level, organizations get all the same benefits as the premium level with two additions. Organizations who are going through the basic assurances process with CQL will have their basic assurances information from the self-assessment and the CQL review uploaded into this data system. That approach allows organizations to, again, have the information managed in a consistent manner as well as allows the organization to do analyses, either frequency counts, cross tabs with any of the variables in the system, and allows multiple iterations of the basic assurances to be included in the database for trend analysis. Next, organizations in the enterprise level also receive four hours of data-related consultation from CQL's research team. This can include sampling, in-depth analysis, study methodology, or really anything that is data-related. Organizations who are interested in purchasing access to the database simply need to subscribe through CQL's website. Once you hit subscribe, you'll be redirected to PayPal. You will make a payment, and upon completing your payment, you'll be redirected to a brief survey. The brief survey provides us the information we need to establish your account at the level that you've selected. Once we receive that, the turnaround time is typically 15 days. When we send you information about your access to the survey system, we will also send a user guide for data inputs for all levels. And for those who have selected premium or enterprise level, we will also send a user manual for the administrative backend side of the system. Should you have any additional questions about access to the database, please send an email to data at the and our data team will get back to you as soon as possible.